This is part 110 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is Secret Manager and why we use it. The main use of Secret Manager is to keep production secrets like database connection strings, API keys, encryption keys, etc. out of source control. If we take a look at the project we've been working with, notice at the moment we are storing the database connection string in appsettings.json file. In addition to the database connection string, we might also store third-party service credentials, API keys, encryption keys, etc. in web.config file, in classic ASP.NET and in appsettings.json in ASP.NET Core. These configuration files that is web.config and appsettings.json are part of the project. So this means when they are committed to the source control repository, everyone who has access to the repository will have access to the sensitive data in these files and could be misused. From a security standpoint, it's not a good idea to store passwords or other sensitive data in configuration files or source code. Secret Manager allows developers to store and retrieve sensitive data during the development of an ASP.NET Core application. It stores sensitive data that is user secrets in a file with name secrets.json. To add this file to our project, all we need to do is in the solution explorer, right click on the project name and then select this option manage user secrets from the context menu. Notice a file with name secrets.json is added. The structure and format of this file is similar to appsettings.json. Now the important point to keep in mind is this file is not part of the project folder. It lives outside of the project folder. Notice when I hover the mouse over, you can see the complete path where this file is located. We'll dig into this path in just a bit. But before that, let's take a look at the .csproj file. And to get to the project file, right click on the project name within Solution Explorer and then select this option, edit employee management.csproj. Notice in this project file, we now have a new node, user secrets ID. And the value that we see here is a random grid, globally unique identifier. And this value is the same value that we see in the path to this file. Let me actually right click on the file name and then select this option open containing folder. Notice this grid in this address bar. This is the same grid that we have in the project file right here within user secrets ID node. With the secret manager, user secrets are stored in a file with name secrets.json. The structure of this file is similar to appsettings.json. The important point to keep in mind is this file is located outside of the project folder. The complete path is shown right here. Username in this path is the vendor's login name and the ID at the end is a random grid that maps to user secrets ID grid in the project file. If you're wondering why is this mapping required? Well, on a single computer, we may have multiple ASP.NET Core projects and a secrets.json file for each project. It is this ID that links a given secrets.json file to a given ASP.NET Core project. It's also possible to share a single secrets.json file by multiple projects. All we need to do is use the grid value of that secrets.json file as the user secrets ID node in all the csproj files where we want to share that same secrets.json file. At the moment, in our project, the database connection string is still in appsettings.json file. So let's cut it from here and also don't forget to remove the extra comma and then paste that connection string within secrets.json file. The only change we made is moved the database connection string from appsettings.json file to secrets.json file. We did not make any other configuration or code change. So let's run our project and see if it works the same way as before. There we go. Our application is working exactly the same way as before. We're able to retrieve employee data from the underlying database. The question that comes to our mind at this point is, we did not write any code 
explicitly to read the connection string now from this secrets.json file. So how is all this working automatically? Well, in ASP.NET Core, we have various configuration sources. We discussed appsettings.json and environment variables in detail in our previous videos in this series. The I configuration service provided by ASP.NET Core is set up to read configuration information from all these configuration sources in the order that is specified right here if we are using the default setup provided out of the box by ASP.NET Core. If we take a look at startup.cs file in our project, notice we are injecting I configuration service into the startup class using the constructor. We're then using the injected iConfiguration service to read the database connection string. So this code is going to automatically read the database connection string if it is present in any of these configuration sources. So this is the reason our application is still working though we have moved the connection string from app settings.json file to user secrets, that is secrets.json file. So it didn't find the connection string in app settings.json but it found it in secrets.json. So it read it from there and our application is still working as before. But one important point to keep in mind is that if we have the database connection string with the same key in multiple configuration sources, then later configuration sources override the earlier configuration sources. If you are using the default setup provided by ASP.NET Core, this is the order in which the configuration sources are read. And this is done by the create default builder method in the web host class. So if we take a look at program.cs file in our project, Notice main method calls create web host builder and this method in turn calls create default builder method of the web host class. ASP.NET Core is open source. So if we take a look at this web host class on their GitHub repo, here is the URL for that. And within the web host class, we have the create default builder method. And if we scroll down a bit, Notice first the app settings.json file is read and if we have an environment specific app settings file that is app settings.development.json or app settings.production.json that file is read and then user secrets are read and followed by that environment variables and finally command line arguments. Now let's understand what actually happens when we build and deploy our project on a staging or a production server. Remember, secrets.json file is deliberately kept outside of the project folder. This file is not checked into source control repository. This means secrets.json file is not copied on a staging or production server when we actually build and deploy. So where will the application find database connection string on these environments? Well, on a production or staging server, store sensitive data like the database connection string, for example, in an environment variable. Remember, I configuration service is set up to read configuration information from all these different configuration sources. Now, let's come in the connection string we have in secrets.json file. At the moment, in our project, we do not have a database connection string in app settings.json file. We also don't have it in the environment specific app settings.json file. That is in this app settings.development.json file. We just commented it in secrets.json file. And we also don't have it in the environment variable or we're not passing it through a command line argument. So let's run our project now and see if we will still be able to retrieve data from the underlying database. Our application still loads the data. Where are we getting the database connection string from? I think it is being used from the previous build. So let's clean the solution. To clean the solution, right click on the solution name in the solution explorer and then select clean solution from the context menu. Clean succeeded. Now let's rebuild the solution. So right click and then select rebuild solution. Notice now the connection string is null. Now let's store the connection string in an environment variable. For that launch the run window, type the control command and click OK. In the control panel click on the system icon 
and then advanced system settings and finally environment variables button we want to create a new system environment variable so click this new button here our variable name is connection strings colon the name of the connection string our connection string name is employee db connection and we have to specify the connection string itself as the value so let's copy it from our secrets.json file and we have to make one small change here we don't need two backward slashes here so let's remove one and then click OK on all these pop-ups. Notice we still see the same error. Let's restart Visual Studio for the changes to take effect. Restart complete. Let's run the project again. Notice now we see the database data. The connection string for our application is now coming from the environment variable that we just configured. Environment variables are configured at the operating system level. On a production server, we add an environment variable with the database connection string. On our local machine, we could use either this secrets.json file or an environment variable to keep the database connection string out of source control. When we actually build and deploy this project on a production server, it just works because it finds the connection string from the environment variable on the production server. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.